Okay, here's the situation. You social engineered your way through the lobby and made it to the back office. You didn't have a lot of time to hang around, but you did manage to implant a jump host into their network. Now that you're back home, let's pivot through the network and steal the crown jewels. Welcome to NetSec Explained, your practical guide to advanced security topics. This is part two of our network pivoting series for red team engagements. In this video, we're gonna learn how to jump through multiple networks to reach almost any target. So let's get started. In this scenario, there's an internal network between us and the protected environment. From our Kali instance, we have only access to a jump host to even get access to the first network. Our goal is to route our traffic from the Kali instance through the jump host, past the proxy point, and into the protected network. Here's how we do it. First, we need a connection that's going to create an SSH tunnel between the Kali system and our jump host. So we're gonna start with an SSH command and we're just gonna use the jump host as our login. We're gonna set a dynamic port for 9050. And it looks like this, ssh-l, we're gonna log in with the username Ubuntu and our dynamic port of 9050. Our jump host address that we can access is 192.168.1.246. Just gonna go ahead and log in. And now we're on our Ubuntu jump host. From there, we're gonna create a second SSH tunnel, this time from our Ubuntu jump host, now that we're on the internal network, to our Windows proxy point. So we're gonna do another SSH-L, and this time we're gonna log in using the Windows 10 username. We're gonna create a dynamic tunnel, uh, but just to help you along uh, as we identify like what these things are connected to, I'm gonna use a different port number. So in this case, I'm gonna use 9060, as our dynamic port between Ubuntu and the Windows host in the intermediate network. And then of course, we're gonna type in the Windows 10 address. So we're gonna do that, we're gonna log in, and now we're on our Windows system. Awesome. All we have to do now is stitch the two tunnels together so that we can jump through both of them. So to do that, we're gonna use proxy chains. So I'm gonna press Control Shift T and open up a new tab. And I'm going to edit the proxy chains config. So sudo nano etsy proxy chains config. Just like last time, the only thing that we care about is all the way down at the bottom. Um, now in our last video, we created a SOX4 tunnel. That's what these dynamic tunnels create, our SOX4 tunnels. So we have a SOX4 tunnel from our local system on port 9050, that was our first command, to the Ubuntu jump host. Next, we're gonna need to create a SOX4 tunnel from our Ubuntu jump host to the Windows jump host, or the proxy point. But I wanna spend a little extra time here and explain what's going on, because this can get confusing if you haven't done this before. The first tunnel was from our Kali system to the Ubuntu jump host. To connect to that through proxy chains, we have a local tunnel open on port 9050 from that first command. Now, to get proxy chains to use the tunnel between the jump host and the Windows PC, we have to use the new port 9060 that we used in our second command. But instead of entering in the Ubuntu IP address, I'm going to enter in the local address as though we were already on Ubuntu. So, we're gonna do SOX4, 127.0.0.1. I'll just change that for formatting. And then 9060, which is from our second command. So after this first line, we're not looking at the IP address from our system anymore, from our local system anymore. We're looking at the IP address as though we were on the Ubuntu system. So from our local host, 127.0.0.1, we hop from Kali to Ubuntu through the local port 9050. Now that we're on our Ubuntu system, we use its local IP address 127.0.0.1 and hop from Ubuntu to Windows on the local port 9060. After that, all of the traffic is forwarded as though we were on the Windows proxy host. So I'm gonna save that and cool. 
Now that our proxies are set up, we can connect to the remote network through proxy chains. Let's take a look. So like last time where we showed how to use the nmap command, we're actually gonna use Firefox just to make things a little easier. So we're gonna type in proxy chains, Firefox, if I can spell that correctly. And now all of our traffic is being routed through the tunnels as though we were on that Windows system. So to hit our target, we're going to do 10.10.11.217. And this is a system on the protected network. And we're in. Not bad. Check that out. And that's how we do a double pivot proxy. Awesome. The last thing I want to show you is how to connect to an RDP session through a jump host. If you're hacking around a Windows environment, this is gonna be a must have skill. So we might as well go over that too. So what we're gonna do is create a new SSH tunnel. So I'm just gonna leave those, create a new tab. Um, the reason why we're gonna need a new SSH tunnel is because RDP tools don't accept proxy settings like Firefox does. So unless you change your whole network configuration, which could cause problems, this is the best way to do it. So instead of a dynamic port, we're gonna create a local port. What that's gonna look like is SSH, and then we're going to target our Ubuntu system. And then we're gonna do a capital L for a local port instead of a dynamic port. The local port we're gonna create just for fun is going to be 9090, and then that's going to connect through the Ubuntu system, we're going to target the Windows IP address. So the Windows IP address on the local, on the intermediate network is 10026. And then the RDP port, uh, because for a local port, you have to specify a port to port mapping. It's going to be 3389. If you don't have this memorized, don't worry. It's something you can quick and easily Google. So I'm gonna log in with my Ubuntu username and then with the Ubuntu credentials. Remember, this is our jump host. Now that we have our local port set up, we can create a new tab. And the tool that I'm gonna use is Ramina. Ramina is an RDP client for Linux systems. I really like it. Um, but we're gonna create a new connection and it looks like this. So we're gonna go up here, we're gonna create new. Uh, we're going to use our local system and then we're going to use the local port mapping that we created, which was 9090. Uh, I'm gonna leave the username and password blank for now. You'll see why, I'm just gonna hit enter. And this is going to ask for the username and password. So Windows 10, since we're targeting our Windows system, and I'll just go ahead and hit enter. Once we are logged in, there we go. We are now RDP'd on the Windows desktop. So just to show you that there's nothing crazy going on, uh, I guess nothing crazier than what we're already doing. Uh, I'm gonna type in ipconfig and you can see that this is in fact the system 10026. That's our Windows 10 system. And so now that we're already peed into here, we can go ahead, open up Firefox, and connect to our target system, which is 10.10.11.217. And here we go. Just scroll through this so that you can see that this is in fact the target website. So that's how you RDP through a jump host system. Awesome. And that's a wrap. In this video, we covered how to route through multiple hops to reach our target. We did this with proxy chains and SSH, and with an SSH local tunnel and RDP. As we wrap up the series, I want you to think about places where you can start using these techniques, because that's the best way to learn. That could be Hack the Box, uh, pen testing engagement, or even the OSCP labs. Well, that's all I have for you today. If you liked this video and found it helpful, let me know by dropping a like, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button to see more videos like this. I'll see you next time.